Welcome to Quran Steps, Surah Maryam, verse 5 and 6. Let's begin with the recitation. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim. Wa inni khiftu al-mawaliya min warai wa kanat imra'ati aqira, fahab li min ladunka waliya. يرثني ويرث من آل يعقوب وجعله ربي رضيا. So this is ayah number five and ayah number six. Allah subhanahu wa taala is quoting what Zakaria alayhis dua is. So Zakaria alayhis salam is saying, وَإِنِّي خِفْتُ and indeed I am afraid. الموالية the successors من ورائي after me. وَكَانَتِ امْرَأَتِي And my wife has been عَاقِرَة Barren فَهَبْ لِي So فَهَبْ Give لِي Me Give to me مِنْ لَدُنْكَ From yourself O Allah وَلِيًّا An heir And the next ayah he says Allah subhanahu quotes him يَرِثُنِي And what will this heir do? Who will inherit me وَيَرِثُ And inherit مِنْ From Ali Yaqub, the family of Yaqub, Jacob, alayhi salam. Waj'alhu and make him Rabbi, my Lord, Radiya, pleasing. So, what was Zakaria alayhi salam afraid of? Because he says, Wa inni khiftu al mawali, I'm afraid of the mawali. So, mawali is a word that is the plural of the word mawla. And here, the scholars explain it's referring to to the paternal uncle's children, the asaba. So if you were here and you had a father and the father has brothers, these are the brothers, and they have children, then these are considered al-mawali. So Zakaria al didn't have any children, so the responsibility of continuing the dawah to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lay with these children here. But he was afraid they were not going to deal with this responsibility they had a don't care attitude to Allah's religion and therefore this will lead to the loss of the religion on the earth and nobody will be called to it nobody will be doing dawah so just a reflection point <clears throat> how little are or how small the impact of the asaba is nowadays so if you have a, a father and he has brothers nowadays those brothers and their children don't form a team and that's a big loss to human society may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and make us strong and make these relationships strong the other thing is that he is afraid of his nephews and that shows us that piety taqwa is not inherited if your parents are good doesn't mean the children will be automatically good no that's not true it also asks us to think about what is our aim in life. Are we like Zakaria al-Islam? Are we interested in the deen? Or are children and our purpose with children only the dunya? It's a question we need to ask ourselves. It also teaches us the importance of one man. Zakaria al-Islam is just asking for one heir. And he believes this one person will make an impact to society. And that shows that one person can, make an enti- one person can affect an entire nation. And hence, that also underlines the importance of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and how he is the one man who is affecting the entire planet Earth, and how his teachings and how it is very important for us to remember him, to respect him, to teach his seerah to our children, and so that they have an emotional connection to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What was the des- description of Zakaria al-Islam for his wife? He calls her وَكَانَتْ imra'ati Imra'a, my uh, wife, imra'ati, my wife, kanat was, i.e. is, aqir. Aqir is an Arabic word which means barren. Okay, so it's a word that can be used both for a man. We can say rajulun aqirun, the man is barren, he doesn't have children. وَمْرَأَةٌ aqir, a lady who has never had and will never have children, so they are barren. Medically, the term used is infertile. 
Sometimes it's good to uh, just bring our senses and to live in the real world rather than in the make-believe world sometimes that the internet and the world, the television makes us live in. So this red line is the infertility rate or the fertility rate, sorry, of women. So as you can see, uh, at the age of 20, it's almost at a maximum. But as they get to just past 30, it starts to drop and it drops. And it's almost at zero by the time you get to 40, 45. So this is natural fertility, whereas for men, in the blue line, it carries on for many, many years. So we must remind our sisters and our young daughters that if you want to have children, you need to be having children before 30, otherwise your chances are going to drop. And Prophet Sallallahu wanted this ummah to have many children, so bear this in mind. What was the dua made and why did he make it? Uh, Zakaria says, فَهَبْلِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيَّ so give me an heir. So what did he want this heir? Did he want him to inherit his money? Or did he want him to inherit the teachings of the deen and so he could teach others? And of course, prophets are not worried about money. They are worried about the deen. How can we say that about this ayah? Because first of all, Zakaria is he's making this dua after he's worked out his wife is barren. In other words, she's not going to have any more children. She must be around 40, 50 years old and she hasn't any children. So he's not really worried about inheritance of wealth. Secondly, he was a carpenter. And carpenters are manual laborers and manual laborers have the transfer of wealth from one generation, from the father to the son, the daughters, is very, very low, little to zero. And the scholars all explain that the prophets, when they talk about the air, they're talking about the air of knowledge of the deen, not of the dunya. So just a reflection on poverty, some interesting statistics. If you have people who earn money by working, the laborers effectively can have be high money earners. So they are people with degrees such as a PhD or a medical degree, some professional degree. Their average earnings, these are from the United States, are much higher than the average. So this is the median. And so they're around the $1,600. Whereas a person who just left school, didn't come out, with, uh, didn't complete school properly, the amount they earn on average in America is $472 per week. Not only so they earn, so the less you know, so more these people will be doing manual labor, People with degrees will be doing sort of more office jobs or high knowledge jobs. They will be earning less. And on the left hand side, it also says what percentage of the time they spend unemployed. So not only do they earn less, they also have less days in the year or in their lives where they're earning money because 11% are unemployed. Whereas if you get a degree, your chance of being unemployed is less, 2.2%. So you earn less when you're poor. You keep less, and the reason you keep less is because if we look here in Kenya, how much of your percentage of your income do you spend on food, which is a basic necessity? You need to stay alive, right? So 45%. Whereas if we compare to the UK or the USA or France, we're talking about 6 to 14%. So there's a lot of money that they use, that they have after eating, whereas if you're poor, half, nearly half your money is disappearing into food and you pass on less so if you look at the amount of this is a, a statistic that shows the amount of wealth that's transferred in millions uh, sorry in billion billion dollars if you look in Africa which is the poorest continent in the world the number of transfers of in wealth even from the rich people is very very low whereas in North America we're talking about 4.2 trillion if you actually add up the entire amount it's 4 plus 2 is 6 6 plus 4 is 10 it's really around $10.5 trillion, whereas in Africa, we're barely even uh, getting to 0 0.01. So that's like 0 0.1, 0 .1. it's very, very low. So we can summarize all of this is when you're poor, you have less to start with, you have less at the end of the month, and you have less at the end of life. So if you are not poor, say Alhamdulillah, and recognize the difficulty that poor people lead every day. So why weren't the prophets rich when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, owns, you know, he is the Rabbu samawati wal ard, he is the Lord of the heavens and the earth, but why didn't he make his prophets rich? 
And this is really to underline and teach us, as the Prophet Sallallahu said in this hadith, which is in Tirmidhi and it's Sahih, he said, لو كانت الدنيا, he said, if the dunya, ta'adilu was equal to, عند الله, in the sight of Allah, جناح بعوضة, the wing of a fly, just one wing of a mosquito. So mosquito has, I think, more than one wing. So if it's just one wing, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the entire dunya and everything that was in it, then was even worth that wing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not ma saqa kafiran minha shurbata ma in. He would not give him a glass of water even to drink on the last day. In other words, this hadith is teaching us that the dunya is not even worth in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a single wing of a mosquito. It is really worthless. And the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make the prophets rich is to, un- to underline to us that they're not here to take our money. They didn't come here to become rulers over us. They came here to teach us what is beneficial for us. And it's very interesting. I just What I did was I just searched for this word here. وَمَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَجْرِ And I do not ask from you any reward or payment. Who is saying this? These are all in Surah Shu'ara. In this one, Allah subhanahu is quoting Nuh alayhi salam. In Ayah 127, Hud alayhi salam. Ayah 145, Salih alayhi salam. Ayah 164, Lut alayhi salam. Ayah 180, Shu'ayb alayhi salam. And if you look, they're all saying the same thing. وَمَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَجْرٍ I'm not asking you for any payment for this da'wah I'm doing, for this call that I'm giving to you. In أَجْرِيَ Indeed, my reward is only إِلَّا عَلَى رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ On or due from the Lord of the worlds. Who that is Islam? Say same wording. وَمَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَجْرٍ إِنْ أَجْرِيَ إِلَّا عَلَى رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ صَالِحْ Same words. وَمَا, أسل... وما أَسْأَلُكُمْ مِنْ أَجْرٍ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَجْرٍ in ajri illa ala rabbil alamin wa ma as'alukum alayhi min ajr in ajri illa ala rabbil alamin lut all saying the same wa ma as'alukum alayhi min ajr shu'ayb alayhi salam and then when it comes to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allah subhanahu wa commands him qul say declare tell the people make it very clear to them ma as'alukum alayhi min ajr i'm not asking you for any ajr for any reward any payment for this work that i am doing and Prophet Sallallahu as in a higher level, he says, وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُتَكَلَّفِينَ I'm not one of those people who pretend. So, they're teaching us that they're not after our money. They have, uh, we have no reason to doubt their sincerity. Uh, did the Prophet Sallallahu leave any inheritance behind? And the answer is, in terms of dunya, no. In terms of deen, yes. How do we know? It's a very beautiful hadith narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha, which is collected by Sahih Muslim, in which she says, in Azwaj al Nabi, the wives of the Prophet Hina Tuwfiya Rasulullah, when the Messenger of Allah died, Tuwfiya, alayhi wa salatu salam, Aradana and Yabathna Uthman bin Afan, they wanted to send Yabathna Uthman bin Afan ila Abi Bakr to Abi Bakr. Who is Abu Bakr? He is now the Khalifa after the Prophet وسلم, and he's in charge of all the affairs. And so they wanted to send Uthman bin Affan. Why? Because they wanted to ask their inheritance. Because a wife, when the husband dies, there's a husband, there's a wife. If the husband dies, the wife will inherit a certain amount of wealth. The shares in the Quran for her, the fixed shares, are either a quarter, if there's no other progeny, or an eighth. So they said, and if there are more than one wife, if you had, you know, the Prophet had many wives, but Muslims can have a maximum of four wives, they will all share in this share. So they wanted this amount. So if there was eight, uh, if there, let's say you had four, uh, four billion dollars, right, and you had four wives, each one would get a quarter of that, uh, and they would share in the quarter, okay? So then what happens when Aisha radiallahu who is also a wife of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam here says she says qalat Aisha lahunna alaysa qad qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say and these are his words la nurath we are not inherited from ma whatever tarakna we leave behind fa huwa sadaqa it is charity for the general Muslims. So subhanAllah, Aisha radiallahu is clarifying that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu didn't leave anything behind for anybody to inherit. That also shows the lie 
of the people who claim that Hazrat Abu Bakr kept the inheritance away from Fatima radiallahu anha. Because if that was a crime, they should also be complaining about the lack of inheritance for his wives. But of course nobody complained and the wives accepted that. They understood this hadith is true. This is indeed what the Prophet said. And that shows that that claim is false and a lie. Right, remember Zakaria alayhi salam says, I want the, my son or this heir to be pleasing. Who is he pleasing to? Well, of course, he's pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how do we become pleasing to Allah? Fi aqwalina wa af'alina wa sa'iri tasarrufatina. With our, what, our speech, what we say. What we say should be pleasing to Allah. And what we do, if you know, what we do with our hands and with our legs, our actions should be also pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just out of interesting, the word radiya, uh, we use it a lot. We find it radiya'an, when we say radiyallahu anhu, may Allah, Allah be pleased with them. Uh, we say we use radiya when we, in the hadith, we say raditu billahi, I am pleased with Allah as as as. Radiyatu billahi rabban as a lord wa radiyatu bil islami deenan with islam is my religion wa radiyatu bin nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and with muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a nabi so that same word radiyah radiyah okay radiyallahu anhu radiyah um, we also use radin wa mardiyun uh, is the maf- called the ismul maf'ul which ends up in urdu we say in urdu meri marzi hai it actually comes from arabic meri mardi hai which literally means by my choice, by what pleases me. And hence that's why we, we understand when we say Mary Marzihe that whatever I like to do, I will do. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alameen rabbana zidna ilma assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.